Can you believe it? It's the middle of November and here I am stood outside in a t-shirt. What a glorious day. Anyway, hello everybody, welcome back. Now today I'm gonna to be talking to you about batteries and winterization. What you should be doing with your battery over the winter period. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about the pros and cons of leaving your battery in the caravan, taking it home. I'm gonna be showing you our solar panel installation, how we actually connect it to the battery. And finally, I'm gonna be talking to you about how to measure the state of charge in your battery and understanding what the numbers actually mean. So first of all, let's go through the pros and cons of taking your battery out of your caravan. So leisure batteries inside caravans are not a once installed forget about item. They do need to be looked after. So quite rightly, if you were to take the battery out of the caravan, you could take it home and you could look after it. You could put it on a trickle charge. You could look after it, measure the voltage on it, wrap it up, put it on blocks, give it a bedtime bath and generally look after its condition. Because if they do get cold and if they freeze up, the condition of the battery really does deteriorate. In fact, it can knacker the battery over the winter periods. So by taking it out and taking it home, you can look after it and monitor it with no problems at all. The big downside to that, however, is that your caravan is gonna have no power. If your insurance requires you to have an alarm enabled, and like us, we have a tracker as well, they're not gonna get any power. So that means you could invalidate your insurance policy. So what's the alternative? Well, what a lot of people do is they have a second battery where they rotate them and take one home, charge it up, look after it, install another battery here for about six weeks and then swap them over backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. So, you know, that's another downside that you're gonna to have to constantly look after it as well. So what about if you leave it in the caravan? What are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? Or if you're looking for a battery pun, what's the positives and what's the negatives? Thank you. Well, obviously I've just touched on the two subject areas which we need to address when leaving a battery in the caravan. On the positive, it's gonna be powered up. It's gonna have the tracker enabled. It's gonna leave the alarm active. So that's gonna be great. It's gonna be great to look after. The downside is though, it's susceptible to frost damage. You know, we've covered frost damage in the caravan with the water, but the battery itself, if they get very, very cold, the condition of them can be reduced quite significantly. Now, if you're lucky enough to have your caravan at your home, well, that's not really a problem. You can plug it into the electric hookup and keep the trickle charger built into the caravan, keeping a positive voltage in the caravan. Also, applying a little bit of heat now and again, make sure that the battery keeps a little bit warm. So that's good. If, however, you're like us, you're in a storage yard miles away from anywhere, there's no power on site, what do you do? What are the options? Well, again, we could swap our battery out with another one every now and again. But what we did when we first purchased our caravan is we bought a solar panel. Now, our solar panel doesn't live on the roof like many new installations. Ours fits in front of the window and it has stayed there for the past three years when our caravan is in storage. Now, I did do a video about solar panels, so that's a good time for you to go and have a look up here at the video which covers off solar panels. It talks about them, how they work, what they're made of, etc. But today I'll show you specifically our solar panel setup and I'll show you how I've actually got it connected to our battery. I try to think of another battery pun there, but I currently can't think of one. So this is our solar panel installation. As you can see, it fits behind the windows in our caravan. It has been there for the past three years. We've maintained our battery condition over the past three winters with our solar panel right there. Our specific solar panel is a suitcase style two by 50 watt panel, which gives us 100 watts of charging capabilities. This provides us all the power we need when we are in storage. It also provides us all the power we need when we're off grid. If you want to know about more off grid, click up here and have a look at the video of us going off grid. This behind the window won't operate as a hundred watts, admittedly. You see these windows are tinted. The panel itself is pretty obscured as well. So it's behaving a bit like a 40 to 50 watt panel in its current configuration. However, that's more than enough power to trickle charge our battery. Now it does help that our caravan is actually facing due south. So even on the cold shortest days, we still get quite a large track of sunlight throughout the day. If we were facing differently, if we were facing north ways, maybe it wouldn't be operating so well. So that is quite an advantage for us right now. 
Now, if you're interested in this particular panel, there is a link in the description to it down below. Go and have a look at it. They're about 130 pounds. There are bigger ones, obviously, which are more expensive, but have a look at that one anyway. Let's go and have a look at the battery and I'll show you how we've got it connected straight on. Right, this is the cable here. I hope you can see that. I'll show you a close up of that now of how that goes through from the battery box to our batteries. Now, rather handily, this battery here, which is a Numax, has got a terminals post on the battery, which means you can screw down an extra auxiliary cable. Now, the great thing about this, it means that I can plug in the solar panel directly straight onto the battery, bypassing any of the caravan's electrics. So what I have here is I have the cable which goes straight onto the battery and I have here a little fuse holder as well. I've put a 10 amp fuse in here, a 100 watt panel divided by 12 volts is about 8.3. You can't get an 8.3 amp fuse. So I've gone for the next one up, which is a 10 amp and that's absolutely fine. Right, so here we are. This is the back of our solar panel. As you can see, we've got our controller here and each panel is wired in first to here and then both of them into here. So that's the two panels working across. Now, if we follow the cable down, as you can see there, we've got the panel connections just here. And then the second one on is the battery terminal. Now, if we follow the cable down, you can see it's knotted up so it doesn't snag. And we come down and we've got ourselves a plug. Now that's an IEC kettle type plug, which I use to isolate the connection. And then this then follows off down and goes underneath the seat. You can see, that the battery wire comes in across and that white block there is the back of the battery box. And as you can see there quite clearly, it just goes into the back of the battery compartment. Okay, finally, how do you understand if the battery is full, flat or knackered or really in good condition? Well, there's a couple of techniques here that we can use. So first of all, we need to understand the resting voltage. And to do that, we need to charge the battery up. So use your trickle charger as per the instructions on the charger itself. Connect it to the caravan, charge it up. However you charge up your battery, do that. The second thing we need to do is after it's been charged, disconnect it and leave it to rest for two to three hours. Completely disconnected from everything. It's very important. We need to let the battery settle down. It's just had a lot of charge and has had a lot of uh, excitement put through it. So we need to let it calm down. Now, after two to three hours, you're going to need a multimeter, something like this, and it's going to give you a voltage reading. Put the probes across the battery, negative to negative, positive to positive, and read the battery voltage. Now, up here, let's put some graphics up. If the battery is 12 volts or lower, the chances are it's flat stroke knackered. It means you're not going to use it. It's got no capacity left. If it's 12.8 volts or higher, it's fully charged and in a great condition. Now the difference between 12.8 and 12 means the difference between 100% and 0%. So if it's measuring 12.4, it's going to be about 50% charged, which means that likelihood is if you've just fully charged it, the likelihood is it may need replacing quite soon. If however, you've only charged it for a little time or it's had no charge at all and it's 12.4, likelihood is you'll be able to charge it up and boost it up no problems at all. The important thing to remember is batteries don't like going flat. They don't like going beneath 12 volts. If they do, the chances are you're going to hurt them. They're not going to recover. Now, a final warning is if you smell anything around your battery, if it smells like rotten eggs or if you see any bulging around the sides, disconnect it, take it out of the van, remove it completely. The chances are it's knackered. In that case, it needs to be disposed of safely. So there we go, guys. That's everything that I can tell you today about winterizing your batteries. I hope it's been useful for you and I hope there's been some great tips in this video for you. So I've just checked the battery in our caravan. Everything is fine. Everything is tickety boo. So I'm happy for it for another winter. So that's it from us this week. Any questions or comments, please feel free to put them down below. I'll try my best to answer them and I'll see you next week, guys. Take care now. Bye bye.